Hi guys, it's Allie. It is supposed to be spring in Alberta. It's April 14th today. We still have a lot of snow. There's probably six to 12 inches in the bush and it's actually trying to snow right now. I am so sick of the snow, but the show must go on. My husband Kevin and I are self-proclaimed project junkies. We have a list of three to five projects every year that we like to tackle between the spring and the fall. Sometimes they get done, sometimes they don't. Last year we accomplished a major project. We planted two huge food forests in the backyard. They have uh, like 40 different varieties of cold hardy trees, which is awesome for us. And we started working on, but didn't quite finish before the snow showed up, um, our garden project. So that one, keep an eye out for that guy. And yeah, now, now we are working on a chicken coop. So in our, you know, four to five year plan, we were looking to get chickens and I accelerated that plan by coming home with chickens a few weeks ago. I called Kevin and I said, I'll be home in three hours and I have 10 baby chicks. Oh no. So here we are. Our first project of the year is to get our chicken coop prepared for our little chicklets that are in the brooder. Um, we have decided to house our chicks right here. This is a little thicket of underbrush that is pretty near to the house. So we plan on putting our chicken coop uh, right out here with the door to access for picking up the eggs. And we will have a pretty big run in the back there. I think that this will keep my chickens nice and happy because they'll have lots of stuff to dig through and worms and dirt and bugs and grossness. Um, and it'll keep me happy. We'll be able to harvest their uh, droppings and the litter from their chicken coop and put it into our big compost pile. And we'll just kind of turn that into the cycle of life. That stuff will break down and it will add nutrition to the garden and the food forest. And all of those trimmings and clippings and offcuts from the vegetables will then feed our chickens, who will then add to the compost. So it's a great sustainable system to add to our growing little homestead. Kevy's gonna come in with his skid steer and actually the way that we've designed how we want the chicken coop to look and sit in this little bush means that he only has to take out a couple of small, mostly dead standing trees and level the area out so we can just drop the coop right in place and then we'll be able to install our fence. It's a beautiful but windy day here in Alberta. Kevin is at work today so I have a chance to kind of come and do a couple little things that I can't really do when he's around dropping big trees and frittering with the skid steer. Um, I'm sitting right now where the chicken run is going to be and we've decided to kind of put them in this little forested area. It's really vibrant down here oh, and windy. Um, and so there's lots of stuff coming up. Things are coming alive in here this spring but it's very thick. So I want to make sure that my chickens have enough room to get around. And if I don't thin out this, these understory trees just a little bit, they're not going to have really anywhere to go, even in a huge run because it's so dense. And oh, and I can't forget, time is ticking. My big chickens are getting ready to be out of the brooder. And I bought an incubator and 36 hatching eggs yesterday. So like, we need to get this done because those eggs are gonna hatch in about 21 days and they're gonna need to go in the brooder and the brooder needs to be empty and my big chickens need to be in here and I gotta get some stuff done today. a bright Friday morning. We are out here nice and early. It's about seven o'clock in the morning. Our kids aren't even up yet and that's all right with us. Hey, Ed? Yeah, you bet. That'll give us time this morning to kind of get things organized. We got uh, big plans for today. Kind of had to, what, pivot yesterday from what we had planned. We had the fruit forest lined up to do our, our uh, pear guild, but uh, we ran into another hydraulic leak. So back on the trailer, the unit went and off to town, it went to get fixed. Of course, it's like 
Um, you know, Murphy's Law, we have that too. Kevin and I were the masters of the pivot. We always have five big projects on the go. So when something goes wrong with one, which inev inevitably always does, we just look at each other and go, which one should we pick up, honey? Because yeah. we can't sit still for too long. Yeah, you bet. So uh, after we got back from town, we hopped in my pickup, uh, went to the old uh, lumber store, picked up the required uh, wood that we needed, and we had a beautiful night last night. So we worked till about, what, 8.30? Uh, we got the back post in, uh, ready to go. So this morning, we're going to start off on the hardware cloth and uh, hopefully have that back portion of the run uh, put together by the end of the day. It's going to start to look like a real chicken coop run soon. I yeah. think like it's gonna take shape. I think after today, it'll actually look like something except beside the hole of the bunch. You bet. <laughs> so we're excited. Uh, we'll get on this project uh, probably for the morning. Uh, good chance my skid steer will be ready this afternoon. So we'll pick that up because our trees are and, here. Our trees are here yeah. for the Paragild or for our, the new food forest, sorry. And they are desperately need to go into the ground. So we are hoping that our skid steer is back in action before noon to get that done. Yeah, you bet. And if not, uh, again, we have great neighbors. Actually, one reached out uh, late in the evening last night and said if we needed to borrow a skid steer, he is more than willing to uh, lend that to us. So uh, we're happy to have these fantastic neighbors around us. And other than that, we're going to get things going this morning. And Yeah, you're on it. You betcha. Cheers. Cheers. When we originally tried to hang the hardware cloth, it was a bit of a chore. We originally... <coughs> Pain in the ass. <laughs> Pain in the ass. <laughs> we originally cut a 24 foot strip of this hardware cloth, which is inch by inch, and I think it's 14. 14 gauge. gauge. Yeah. It's quite heavy. It's 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 awkward to work with. So it was a nightmare, and we <laughs> quickly decided to scrap it and go to a different design. So I'll let Kevin explain to you what we did. Yeah. So the design we went with, Ali came up with a great idea to make it modular. So with our fence posts being eight feet apart. Uh, it worked out perfect. We could grab our eight foot two by sixes and just make a panel out of it. So hardware cloth being four feet width and we wanted it eight feet tall. Uh, we just put two pieces together and uh, slammed this baby together. So with that being said, on the first one that we did, uh, we pulled the hard we'll pull the hardware cloth and we'll tack it flush to the one side being the bottom. And then on the next one, we'll put the hardware cloth in the middle of the board. So I marked those out. The board being five and a half inches wide, I marked it at two and three quarter. And then all we'll do is we'll tack the hardware cloth on the middle of that one, pull our one portion of it out of the way, put another board down, pull another thing of hardware cloth, a little, we got ourselves a little assembly line going. It really works not bad. It works really good. And then at the end, we got our chicken wire back there that we're going to put on the bottom couple feet to lay out so we can bury it so no animals can uh, get inside our coop because we have bears, foxes, we don't need those stinking badgers. <laughs> yeah. I think we got a little bit of everything here. So uh, we just want to make sure that our chickens are secure. You know, we've invested a lot of time and effort in this, so we want to make sure we do it right. chicken coop chicken run project it is as you can see a glorious spring day in Alberta yesterday Kevin and I were sun tanning a little bit and today the weather was cold enough that I had to put on a toque the sun's kind of peeking out but it's been also drizzly and it's not that fun to be outside today I'm not gonna lie um, today we have a, a kind of a technical portion of the project to do so I am going to pass it off to Kevin and he'll explain to you what we've got on the go. Yeah so what we got on the go today is we got our chicken coops going to be delivered on Monday. Whoop, whoop. So with that happening Monday and it being Thursday of the long weekend <laughs> and we're gone camping for part of it, literally we got today and tomorrow to get this thing wrapped up. So. Yeah. 
Now that we've got our last corner post in to where it's going to be um, hooking up with the chicken coop, we'll get that put in. So we need to make sure that this space is all nice and level. Uh, we want to have it kind of one and done. We're getting in a picker truck to lift it into place so we don't want to mess around taking a bunch of time. So we'll use the builder's level behind us to get this all nice and level. So for those of you who don't know what a builder's level is, uh, this is how you get everything so it's level throughout a job site. So you could uh, see over a couple hundred feet of diff uh, distances and get your corner posts all at the same height. So that'll work out good. When I bring in my fill, uh, it'll be all at the same height and we'll be good to go. And then we can go pick up our uh, six by sixes, which that's what we've decided to use to put under the chicken coop for uh, it sit on. Also, in the event that we ever want to move it, I don't think that we will, but if we place it directly on the ground, it will be an absolute bear to move. Whereas if we place it on the six by six um, skids, then should we ever want to move it, we'll have access underneath from the outside of the chicken coop and we'll be able to move it fairly easy. Yeah, like And it's exactly what is at the setup at the place where we're getting it from. They have it on skids, so it's just quick and easy. Throw some slings underneath and uh, we hook it up and away we go. So um, we'll get Allie on the good old tape measure because that's her favorite job <laughs> of the builder's level. So what will happen is I've got this thing all leveled so now that it's leveled, pretty much, uh, Ali will put a tape measure on each corner post. Like this one. I will take my benchmark reading from the bottom here because this is our highest grade. And when we get that measurement through the center line of our builder's level, that is the number that we're going to use when we're setting the three other corner posts. So, uh, should go fairly quickly. It sounds like it sounds really technical, but once you've used a builder's level, it's very, it's kind of intuitive. And if you don't have one and you're looking to level something off, honestly, try and rent one. Your local your local rental company will likely have one and they really do make the job a lot easier. Oh, 100%. If we had to try and do this all by hand with, let's say, like a four or six foot uh, built, like just a regular level, level? Oh, that would be you'd a start nightmare. on the corner, you'd have to go so far, and it, it can be done. It's just way it's more It's just work. way more work, so, you know, I... We will measure our four corners, and it will be done. And yeah. then Kevin will come in and backfill it. There will be no fiddling around there's going to be no jumping out and trying to level it say even with a two by four right like yeah. scraping it along none of that so it'll be a lot easier to do it this way and then once this is all leveled out like kev said we're going to get our skids put in and then we're going to carry on with the panels because we are not quite done the complete run but we absolutely needed to get this corner done so that we could start leveling and being ready for the coop because the coop can get put in before we finish the run. 